Hey guys, I uh, just got a real quick tip here. This 2005 Volkswagen Passat 2 liter diesel um, came in. Just kind of wanted to show you what I found. The customer complaint was just zero power and anytime she put her foot into it, just big clouds of black smoke back there. You know, pretty much had to drive around with the four ways on that bad. So go to look at it, do the code scan. And um, unfortunately I forgot to do uh, a code scan in generic, so I don't have the P numbers. I just kind of have the Volkswagen numbers, um, but I'll put the, the list up there. Um, you know, the code for intake, flat motor, uh, open circuit slash short circuit to ground, um, turbocharger, under boost, the intake flat motor faulty, another code for that, um, linear oxygen sensor slash pump current open circuit, um, and then coolant thermostats uh, below regulating temperature. A uh, bunch of those kind of normal for one of these, but you know, definitely the under boost. So go for the road test and hopefully I got a chance to record this. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't really know if I did or not, but um, if I did, uh, I'll put some of it up there to show you what I looked at. So basically all I do is just kind of graph um, desired versus actual um, intake pressure and just look at the graphs, right? And normally with an under boost, if you have, this one was a little different. Normally if you have a, a hose that's blown open or you get a rock hole through the uh, intercooler or something like that where you can't develop boost because you have a leak, normally what you'll see is your um, desired will shoot right up as your throttle demand goes up and then actual will kind of hit atmospheric. It might climb a tiny bit above atmospheric, but it kind of stays steady, right? Whereas this one here, it was doing a bit of a sawtooth pattern, right? The pressure, actual pressure would kind of jump up a little bit, then it would come down, kind of jump up a little bit, come down, kind of, and so on and so on. So that felt a little weird, kind of made me think about, well, could it be something else? You know, what if the, the engine is just not creating enough power to shoot out enough exhaust to actually spool the turbo, right? As soon as, you know, if you got a, a fuel demand issue or a fuel supply issue, right? Demand goes up and just can't supply that or you got a injector problem or what have you, what have you, what have you. Um, so, you know, of course, being an older Volkswagen and being a diesel that doesn't really get that much driving, like not that much actual um, heavy driving, just all light stuff in around town. You know, you get buildup of carbon, you get the whole uh, boost system just full of oil, all that sort of stuff. So of course, a lot of the readings for things, they don't look great. Um, but I'll show you what I found. As part of the boost, um, the boost piping, this is the last piece just before the throttle body. Um, and I'll show you a shot closer up in the car in a second. So after it comes through, you get your regular hoses that go to the intercooler and then come out and then it comes to a plastic manifold. There's the, the boost pressure sensor in that manifold. And this is the last piece, this real hard elbow. So um, hopefully you guys can see that. Let me just wake you up one second and get you a light, kind of show you what happened. And I would have to imagine if you have one of these two liter diesels, um, I would have to imagine this would be a common problem just by the nature of this and that plastic hose, that plastic pipe is not very well supported. So a lot of that strain is gonna be on this piece and it blows out in the center. Maybe I can put this, is that gonna show? Well, um, can you see that? I hope you can. Right in there. Let me use a flashlight. Maybe I can go from the inside. Can you get that to open up? Kind of in there. Is that showing? Oh, I hope so. Anyways, um, so this splits open. And the thing that's interesting about this is because this is under such pressure, it's under such a hard bend, it kind of acts like a bit of a reed valve. So it also made a rather unusual noise, 
not your typical Boostly hose, no, hose noise. So what was happening is this flap was opening up, then it was closing and opening up and closing, opening up and closing, just constantly doing that. That's why I got a sawtooth pattern of my actual boost. Um, so of course, also being Volkswagen and being diesel, this little piece was spendy. It was almost three hundred dollars. But what do you do? <laughs> You're not taping this up with duct tape. I don't care how strong your Gorilla tape is; it ain't gonna hold. Um, so, anyways, if you got a sudden boost leak, or if you got a sudden power loss in one of these diesels, uh, and you got one of these two-liter engines, check this piece here right before the turbo. Um, you know, this is on the inside. You can poke at it. You know, I saw right away that first of all, you'll see the the oil blasted over the valve cover and everything else and you kind of see some fraying. I'd have to imagine this would be super common. So let me show you on the vehicle, show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's up close of the engine. And if we look over here, we see under, um, it's not the coolant pipe, but underneath that is your intercooler, uh, main boost hose coming from the intercooler. And then it goes underneath the expansion tank, the coolant expansion tank just to the outside of the uh, oil filter and the fuel filter and it goes to this plastic uh, pipe. There's the boost pressure sensor and just down in there is the only fastener that holds that boost pipe. That's the only anchoring of that boost pipe. So if we grab this section here, it's flexible. That part's flexible over there, right? So if this had another anchor right here, I'm sure that would probably be okay, but it's only got the one, so that means all that flexing is gonna be flexing this joint hardcore. Um, right at the throttle body, and of course there's a clip in there, and then your regular hose clamp. Um, that's all there was to it. Now, you, of course you wanna undo the whole plastic pipe, otherwise you're gonna have a hard time getting that off, I imagine. Um, but really not that bad of a job to do uh, You can get it around the fuel filter For us it was easier because we were doing a fuel filter at the same time um, But yeah, you can sneak it around not that bad of a job to do This is certainly a lot better than changing a turbo But you can also kind of see all the oil that was blasted over the throttle body um, And then the EGR and all that uh, of course there are all these covers that normally sit on top of all that. So until you take that off, you might not see it. Uh, but yeah, as soon as you take it off, it becomes overwhelmingly apparent. So just want to pass that on. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm sure that's common. I'm sure it's much more common than these main um, boost hoses. So if you have one of these engines and especially if you see all that kind of oil splatter, yeah, check that little 90 degree coupler. Okay, so there is one other thing I'll mention about this vehicle. Um, given the driver, given the nature of their driving, what they do, it's just a grocery getter, right? Just does short trips, hard labor gets a chance to do any kind of sustained driving to burn things off. Diesels, of course, don't like that. So, you know, if you look all around here, you just see tons and tons of oil from the PCV system just gunking everything up. Well, what if the veins in the variable geometry turbo are frozen, particularly if they're frozen shut, right? It's gonna try and spool up relatively quickly, but it won't be able to spool because it's gonna create back pressure. Because of the back pressure, you know what, you'll get uh, a massively rich condition. You know, it's gonna be trying to fuel, it's, it's not gonna get oxygen in the cylinder. You're gonna get black smoke from that condition. Whereas if the veins stick open, um, it's like you don't have any turbo at all. Uh, you probably won't get as much black smoke. It depends on if the fuel mapping is, is still, if it hasn't learned yet, and if it's still trying to dump as if you have boost, but you know what, it would register that you don't have boost. So you might not get as much black smoke if the veins are stuck open. But I wanted to look at that. It's quick and easy. What do you do? Thankfully for this one, the turbo is right there. You pop off this vacuum line. Um, these are all pretty much the same where you got a, a vacuum dash pot that controls an actuator rod. So rather than opening this up, 
you know, obviously I'm doing a time belt right now, so I got the whole front clip off. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have this kind of access in the vehicle, but all you have to do, hook a vacuum pump up to that, pump it up, and you should be able to see if that rod moves or not. If those veins are stuck closed, you would imagine that rod would not move. Now, yes, it's possible something could be broken, but that's asking for a lot. The vast majority of the times, if you hook up a uh, vacuum to that and you see that rod move, you, you know with pretty high degree of certainty that those veins are not stuck. So, we'll get vacuum hose, kinda shove that on there like you so. We'll get a vacuum pump. Now, I'm gonna put you down for a second because this is gonna take two hands. Okay, so hopefully you can see that rod in there. We'll give it some vacuum. And you can see it's moving right away. We're not even really applying that much vacuum and it's moving. And it maxes out right around there, right? And then when we release, we hit this Schrader valve. See, it comes down right away. So we can feel pretty confident that our turbo veins are not stuck. And again, because it's kind of trying to build boost, it's kind of seesawing, um, probably not a turbo itself. So we'll look for other things. Um, but for sure, this is what I did uh, before I really went underneath and looked everything over because um, I didn't have the covers off just yet. Just a quick thing I wanted to rule out. Um, and then sure enough, when he gave it the full look-see, we saw the uh, hose that was blown open. And there you have it. So just a quick test like that gives you, yes, it's not 100% accurate. We didn't open it up. We didn't physically see the veins moving. You could have something weird like a, uh, a break in the linkage somewhere. But it, with how little time that takes, it's a pretty good indicator that yes, the turbo is free, it is moving. So let's look at other things first before we try and invest the time to open all that stuff up and actually look at the veins, right? Just kind of one of those things, want to mention that too, but I'll carry on with the rest of this video. So I was looking for a nice picture that I could put up here to kind of show you what these guys look like inside for, you know, the, the variable veins and how the, the rod kind of moves the veins um, to just direct the airflow to the turbine. I couldn't really find a good picture, of course, you know, ProDemand, all data, they don't tell you anything about these because they're meant to be serviced as a complete unit. Um, but I did find another video on YouTube, a guy by the name of MyTurboDiesel.com, um, did a fantastic job of kind of showing you what they look like, taking it apart, kind of showing some of the, the common problems of them. Uh, awesome video. So you know what, I'll just link it down in the description rather than trying to put a half picture up there. If you're curious about these turbos, um, Give it a give it a watch. It's a fantastic video. Um, so, anyways, uh, I just want to kind of mention that, and uh, I got a couple other things that I thought were pretty funny on this Volkswagen. So, just a couple more clips. Here's an interesting thing on this vehicle. Got a water pump out. Yeah. Oh, if I need to get a chance to see that view of the thermostat. Yeah, kind of neat, I guess. One of the things that's not so interesting. If you look at this. Uh, cam gear that's the sprocket itself if you look at those mounting bowls uh, hopefully you can see that they're oblong you know what that means you take that sucker off you better make sure you put it back on the exact same spot Wow Volkswagens so here's another thing that's interesting about this car here's the harmonic with the four bolts that hold it down um, a couple others but that's beside the point uh, you know how this looks like when it's on the vehicle? Which, keep in mind, uh, the rest of the vehicle, you know, the, the fan shroud and all that stuff is less than an inch away from that. It's not like anybody could ever see it unless you rip everything apart like this. Well, see this guy. What's that? That is a grommet. Just to make it look beautiful, I guess. Because if you look in here, well, you won't be able to see now because we got all the covers off. But, uh, maybe you can. Let me pull this out again. 
a handy dandy pry bar. I'm gonna need two hands. There we go. Kind of knocked some bolts flying, but either way, um, this does not have an open hole. It's inside the timing cover. So no water or dirt or any kind of intrusion is gonna get to the timing belt. It's literally just there to hide this part of the harmonic and hide the bolts and make it look uniform, even though no one can see it. Weird.